you ever just watch someone struggle and you want to help so bad, you think that you can maybe and you don't want help, this is for you then, my friend. <laughs> I can tell you I know a little bit about this because I have done it, done it so much. And I want to share with you the ways that I've been able to find some peace with it and be able to be there without feeling like I need to take over and hijack hijack the situation, take control, and then hand the controls back over when I got it all figured out. <laughs> You're not like that, are you? Okay, so we may see someone hurting, and then we hurt, and we believe the reason we hurt is because they are hurting, and their pain is creating our pain, and so the solution becomes so that we can feel better is to stop their pain, because when we stop their pain, then we can stop hurting so much and then we'll all feel better, right? But sometimes they don't want help. And sometimes they don't even believe that there is help out there, that it can get better. Maybe they don't believe that they can ever achieve it. And it, maybe you've seen, see how their pain may be even self-inflicted. Maybe it's because of the choices that they've made. Or maybe it's because they're in a victim state or in the mindset that they're in. And if they just change this or change this or... Maybe in some way it's serving them to be in that pain. They're getting something out of it. But bottom line is they're basically sitting in misery and just um, thinking there's no way out of it or just not changing it at all. And what they're doing is they're sitting in a place of, I hate this, this is horrible, I can't handle this, but then they don't make any changes. So often... We start looking at what our choices might be and it feels like they're between these things okay we can leave so that we don't have to sit there and watch it anymore and we don't have to feel terrible and we don't have to hurt anymore because we don't have to see it or we just don't want to watch it happen right or we stay and we try harder to get to the them to change. We keep trying to offer solutions. We keep trying to tell them where the help can be, what they can do, all the things that they could do to make this better for them and stop hurting so much. Or we stay and we try to completely disconnect and kind of feel numb. Like just, just kind of um, put our feelings on hold at all. Stop caring what it feels like and really what this is is it's our own version of this is horrible I can't handle this that's resisting what's going on and what we've just done is we've compounded their own issues of this is horrible I can't handle it so now at the family picnic they're bringing this is horrible I can't handle it and we're bringing this is horrible I can't handle it either <laughs> I can't watching you not handle it and so like the dish has already been covered right but now we've got doubles so whatever we choose to do we want it to be able to come from a really good solid place now these places if I can't handle it this is horrible are more of fear and we really don't make great decisions don't take great action from a place of fear we want it to be driven by things like calm or confidence or feeling capable or compassionate or understanding or acceptance or faith trust but what we want to do is make sure it's calculated and intentional obstacles to that are going to be thoughts like it's my job to protect them from pain I need them to stop hurting so that I can stop hurting and if I don't do something then something terrible is going to happen and then it's going to be all my fault I will contributed to it or it's wrong to just sit there and watch someone else struggle without struggling with them. You know, or this is just horrible. Now usually what that results in when we're working, that's like a really fear-based place to come from. Usually what we do is we try to control or hijack their journey. <laughs> and then um and then really the time that we have left, even if something horrible does happen, the time that we have left has been spent in, in disconnect and fear, which is what we're trying to avoid in the first place, right? So um, think about a time. Here's, here's what I want to do. I want to help you get to a place where you can begin thinking new things about someone else struggling so that you can get to a place of calm, even if someone else is having a really hard time. And the obstacles to that are going to be those kinds of thoughts. I want to introduce some new ones, but first I want you just to allow your mind to go to somewhere. Think about when you had a 
major breakthrough or a major success or a major challenge and you came out on the other side. Like think about all of the things that you benefit from being in that difficult position. How have you benefited from struggle? Did you find the courage to change something finally after all this time? Did you find the courage to stand up and stop tolerating something in yourself or from someone else? Did you develop a really important character or quality that you just really, really needed or used for the rest of your life? Did you develop empathy for someone? Um, you know, these are all things that, that we need to struggle in order to develop really, really thoroughly sometimes. When I, when I think of mine, I think of my autoimmune issues. Like when I was first told about it, when I was first diagnosed, I just got bit by an ant. When I was first diagnosed, like it was really, really hard. It was a really big struggle. And I finally found a way to be okay and not base my, base my value on what I can do, what I can overcome in physical ways. And really it set me up to just kill this last challenge of tearing my ACL. The reason I was able to come through that recovery so emotionally well was because of what I did in the struggle with with my autoimmune issues years earlier. It's the same mindset. I needed that struggle to have this success later on. It was very important for me. What would I be if someone had taken that struggle away from me? They needed it. So what are some of yours? And just just start to allow your mind to recognize that maybe struggle has a benefit sometimes and then start trying on new thoughts. Thoughts like maybe it's okay to struggle. Maybe this could be the absolutely best thing for them. It's my job to love them. I just get to be here on standby in case they in case they need me, in case they want my help. They are this usually helps us when we're telling ourselves they're broken and they need me to fix them. This is part of their journey. The best way to help take care of them is to take care of me. That's, a, that's kind of a challenging one too, isn't it? So think about it. If you choose to leave, you get to leave from a place of confidence of, like, this is really a good thing to do. I feel really good about this. If you stay, you get to go ahead and keep your feelings. You don't have to completely not care. You get to still care, but you're choosing to maybe be sad with them for a little while. And you maybe you're going to choose to be peaceful while someone else struggles and give them a really great example of what it can be like to feel peaceful, calm, capable, manage your mind while chaos reigns around. Right? I know this is a really challenging thing. If this is something that you're going through, if you really, really are finding yourself struggling while someone else struggles, being okay without feeling like you are being a horrible person, please call. This is something that coaching can really help you with. It gives you the ability to be there and still care without disconnecting or even to keep some distance without emotionally disconnecting with yourself and with other people. And really when you look at it, where are we at the best, best place to help from It's being calm, confident, capable, compassionate, listening, open, accepting. We help so much better if the person decides that they want it from that place than a place of desperation and fear, right? So now maybe if they get tired of their same old serving of fear that they've been using or sitting in for a while, they know that you've got something else to offer. Okay, hope this gives you something to think about. Good luck.